Hello friends. In our last session, we have seen the concept of determinant. Today, we are going to analyze some of the important properties associated with the determinant. Welcome to the session. We have seen that determinant is a unique number or it's a scalar, it's a real number associated only with square matrices and determinants are defined only for square matrices. And these determinants in fact obey some of the properties or rules and today our humble attempt will be to explore what are the important properties of determinant. The first property of determinant is that the value of the determinant will not change even if we interchange the rows and columns of the matrix. That is, the determinant of A will always be equal to the determinant of A transpose. A transpose means we are interchanging the rows and columns of the matrix A we have already seen in the operation of the matrices. So, the value of the determinant will not change even if we do the process of transpose. That is, even if we interchange the rows and columns of the matrix. See, for example, let us say I have a matrix like A here, like say 4, 6, 5, 3. I have a 2 by 2 matrix, I have a 2 by 2 matrix, it's a square matrix. And let me calculate the determinant. Determinant of A equals, for a 2 by 2 matrix, diagonal minus off diagonal. So I have 4 into 5 minus 3 into 6. That means 20 minus 18, the answer is 2. So determinant of A equals 2. Now let me calculate A transpose, A transpose, A raised to T or A dash, whatever you call it. We interchange the rows and columns, right? We have 4, 6, 3, 5. The first row is first column, the second row is second column. I have interchanged the rows and columns of the matrix. So let me calculate the value of the determinant of A transpose. So I have determinant of A transpose equals 4 into 5 minus 6 into 3, 20 minus 18, answer is 2. So, determinant of A equals determinant of A transpose. See here, determinant of A equals determinant of A transpose. That is, the value of the determinant will not change even if we interchange the rows and columns of the matrix. That perhaps the first property. Now, let me just extend this property to incorporate one another feature of the determinant. Another feature of the value was 2, right? Rather than changing entire rows and columns, let me just interchange any two rows or any two columns for that matter. Let me just interchange any two rows or columns of the matrix. Let me form another matrix by just interchanging the rows of the matrix. Let me put the first row as second row and second row as first row. So I have a new matrix, something like this, 3, 5, 4, 6. Just think that I calculated the value of determinant. So what would be the value? 3 into 6, 3 into 6 minus 4 into 5. Answer will be 18 minus 20, answer will be minus 2. See the difference? That is, if we inter, that's the second property of the determinant. That is, if we interchange any two rows, any two columns for that matter, the same thing. If we interchange any two rows or any two columns of the matrix, it will alter the sign of the determinant. It will change the sign of the determinant, but not the numerical value. So 2 become minus 2. So the numerical value remains the same, but it will alter the sign of the determinant. So if we interchange any two rows or any two columns of the matrix, the Determinant will be of a different sign, but numerical value will be the same. We have seen the case of the uh, 
determinant here by looking the 2 by 2 matrix. So we have two properties here. The first property was that the first property the value of determinant will not change even if we interchange the rows and columns of the matrix. Second property may be a relative property that means if we only change the any two rows or any two columns it will alter the uh, new alter the sign of the determinant but not the numerical value. Numerical value will remain the same as we have said. In, two remains the same but uh, the sign in fact changed. That is the second property. Now, the third property of determinant is that if any two rows or columns of the matrices are dependent, that is if there is any linear dependence between any two rows or columns of the matrix, then the value of determinant will be zero. See here. Let me have a matrix like A which is equal to 3, 6, 4, 8. 2 by 2 matrix, square matrix. Let me calculate the determinant of A which is equal to 3 into 8 minus 4 into 6, 24 minus 24, answer is 0. Why answer is 0? The point is that there is a relationship between rows and columns of the matrix. In fact, if we multiply the first column with 2, you will get the second column. So there is a linear dependence between, there is a linear dependence between the columns of this particular matrix. And when there is, in fact in our case, there is a relationship between both rows and columns. Now, if we have a matrix of this kind that is there is a relationship between there is a linear dependence between rows or columns of that matrix then the value of determinant will be zero. In our earlier session we have seen that when determinant is zero that particular matrix is known as singular matrix. So for a singular matrix obviously there will be a relationship between any rows or columns of that matrix. So this is our third property. Now, Similarly, maybe four properties that if, if all the elements in any row or column of a matrix is zero, then the value of determinant also will be zero. Like for example, say we have a 3 by 3 matrix, say A like this, say 6, 5, 1, say 2, 1, 3, 0, 0, 0. That means third row all the elements in the third row is zero. If we calculate the determinant of this particular matrix, say for example, say matrix A equals 6 into how? 1, 3, 0, 0, minus 5 into 2, 3, 0, 0, 2, 3, 0, 0, plus 1 into 2, 1, 0, 0. 2, 1, 0, 0 and the value of determinant will be 0. Value of determinant if you if we in fact expand our analysis you will get 0 everywhere and the value of determinant will be 0. That means if all the elements in a row or column are 0 then the value of determinant will also be 0. That's the another property of the determinant. Now let us just put um, some other properties as well. Now, if we multiply any row or column of a matrix with a scalar, let us see the case. For example, let me have a matrix like A equals 2, 5, 3, 10. I have a matrix and determinant of this particular matrix, 2 by 2 matrix, is 10 minus, uh, say, 20 minus 15, which is equal to 5. 2 into 10 minus 3 into 5. So answer will be 20 minus 15. Answer is the value of determinant is 5. Now, let me say that if we multiply, say, the first column or the second column for that matter, if, let me multiply the first column with a scalar. You have seen that. What was scalar? What is scalar? Scalar is a number, it's a real number, maybe any number. Let me put just put it as 3. 3 is a scalar and we call it K as equal to 3. If I multiply all the elements in the column 
with a scalar with a scalar let me just form a new matrix a form a new matrix say for example say b equals multiply the first column all the elements of the first column with 3 i have 6 here 9 here the other column remains the same 5 10 if i calculate the value of determinant determinant of b equals 60 minus 45 answer is answer is 15 that is the scalar was 3 so in fact which is 15 is nothing but 3 into 3 into determinant of a 3 is in fact our scalar so if we multiply all the elements all the elements in a row or column with a scalar then the value of determinant will increase k fold that means k fold 5 here 15 here 5 here 15 here so that's the another property of the determinant and let me see examine one more property of for example let us have we have a triangular matrix hope you remember in our kinds of matrices we have seen we have seen triangular matrix what was triangular matrix it's a square matrix in which all the elements above or below the leading diagonals are zero hope you remember and let me have a matrix like this let me have a triangular matrix for example a lower triangular matrix like 4 0 0 3 2 0 one, two, four. This is an example of lower triangular matrix. What is lower triangular matrix? All the elements above the leading diagonals are zero. All the elements above the leading diagonals are zero. And let me just calculate the value of this particular determinant of this particular triangular matrix. Let me just say that determinant of A equals 4 into, when we delete the rows and columns, we have 2, 0, 2, 4. Minus, then there is no need of any further analysis, but still 0 into 3, 0, 1, 4, say plus 0 into 3, 2, 1, 2. No need of any this kind of analysis because you are multiplying it with 0, obviously answer will be 0. The, so the answer is, answer is 4 into within bracket 8, 8 minus 0. Then obviously the other part remains 0. So we have 4 into 8 means 32. So the value of this particular matrix is 32. Now how to calculate that particular matrix? See here, 4 into 2 into 4. Hmm? You will get here like here. So it will be basically, so if we, when we calculate, when we calculate the value of triangular matrix, when we calculate the value of triangular matrix, you will get it like this. So 32 equals 4 into 2 into 4. So the determinant of the triangular matrix will be the determinant of the triangular matrix will be the product of diagonal element. We got 32. 32 is nothing but 4 into 2 into 4. So the determinant of the triangular matrix is the product of diagonal elements. Our diagonal elements are 4, 2 and 4. So 4 into 2 into 4 equals 32, which we also calculated as the determinant of this particular matrix. So that are, that's essentially the important properties of determinant. Once more, we have seen that the value of determinant will not change even if we interchange the rows and columns of the matrix. Determinant of A will be equal to determinant of A transpose. If we only change any two rows or columns of the matrix, then it will alter the sign of the determinant, not the numerical value. Numerical value will be the same. If there is any linear relationship between any rows or columns of that part one particular matrix, then the value of determinant will be zero. Or for that matter, then the value of determinant of a singular matrix will be zero. That's the third property. If all the elements in any row or columns are zero, then the value of determinant will be zero. Again, if 
if we multiply any row or column of particular square matrix with a scalar then the value of determinant will change k fold and the value and finally the determinant of the triangular matrix in our case a lower triangular matrix same is the case of an upper triangular matrix as well the determinant of a triangular matrix will be the product of diagonal elements so we have seen six different kind of properties of determinant hope that these concepts are useful to you so until we meet this time stay safe happy learning thank you